Hey kids, it's me, Keith, from the Wired Nerdy Podcast, and this is a retro game review where we pull back the curtain of time and take another look at some of our favorite retro video games. Released in 1988 by Lucasfilm Games, now known as LucasArts, Zack McCracken and the Alien Mindbenders isn't just a game, it's a time machine whisking you back to the golden age of point-and-click adventures. Available on platforms like the Commodore 64, Atari ST, and MS-DOS, this gem of a game has finally made its way to modern audiences through various emulators and re-releases. So, grab your pixelated fedora and let's dive into this nostalgic adventure. Now, it's important to note that this game was released a year after Maniac Mansion, which was LucasArts' first breakout point-and-click adventure game. I'm sure we'll end up doing a review on that title at some point in the near future. Now, when it comes to viewing options, Zack McCracken has many different color resolution releases to accommodate the different types of systems that were available at that time. It also had updates through releases throughout the years. The first time I played it was in CGA mode, which is only four colors, kids. I then played it again in EGA mode, which is a whopping 16 colors. The main footage for the review that we'll use today is from my favorite version, which is VGA, and that is a butt ton of colors at 256. Let's get into the plot. Picture this, Zach McCracken, a tabloid reporter with a nose for the strange and a wardrobe straight out of the 80s, discovers a conspiracy theory involving aliens who are planning to dumb down humanity using a mind-bending machine. With the help of his friends, Annie, Melissa, and Leslie, Zack embarks on a globe-trotting quest to unravel the extraterrestrial plot before it's too late. It's like Indiana Jones meets the X-Files, but with more questionable fashion choices. However, I'm not going to make this light. The game is weird, but in a really good way. You're going to read dialogue that's very funny, and you're going to meet some really outlandish characters. And that's really what sets this game apart from a lot of the other games at that time is it really goes deep in the weird on the storyline and it is well worth it. Let's talk about its graphics. Let's not beat around the bush here. The graphics are as retro as they come. We're talking about chunky pixels, vibrant colors, especially if you're using the VGA 256 version that you see here. Character animations that are more like interpretive dance moves. They're not really smooth, but you got to consider the time. But you know what? It's all a part of the appeal. Every scene, and there are a lot of them that you will visit, is bursting with personalities, from the quirky characters to the bizarre alien landscapes. Sure, it may not be 4K HDR, but it's got that nostalgic flair that makes you feel warm and fuzzy on the inside. So how does it sound? Ah... The sound of the 80s, from the beeps and boops of the Commodore 64 to the MIDI music that's somehow catchy and slightly grating at the same time, the audio in Zack McCracken is a blast from the past. The sound effects may be simple, but they do the job well, whether it's the clack of Zack's typewriter or the bloop of a teleporter. And let's not forget the iconic theme music that's guaranteed to get stuck in your head for days. It's like listening to a retro playlist while riding a neon colored unicorn through a time warp. It's really nice. It is also important to note, depending on what version you're playing, the Commodore versus the DOS version, you're going to get a different sound quality. So it's worth kind of checking out both. And with today's emulation, you can easily do that. So what about gameplay? Now, here's where Zach McCracken truly shines. The game is all about exploration puzzle solving, and clicking on everything in sight to see what happens. The puzzles range from brain bending to downright absurd. Uh, there's oftentimes solutions that require a healthy dose of lateral thinking or consulting a walkthrough guide if you're really in a hurry. But despite the occasional frustration, there's a sense of satisfaction that comes from unraveling each mystery and progressing through the story. Plus, the witty dialogue and zany characters keep things entertaining every step of the way. So what's the final verdict here? Zack McCracken and the Alien Mindbenders may be older than your grandma's collection of audio CDs, but it's still a rollicking good time for anyone with a fondness for classic adventure games. With its charming retro aesthetic, quirky humor, 
and brain-teasing puzzles, it's a journey worth taking, even if it means dusting off your old Commodore 64 emulator. On average, it takes about five and a half hours to complete. If you're a completionist and want to do everything in the game, you're looking at about 13 hours. That's not bad for a game that was released in the late 80s. So, grab your mouse and get ready for some nostalgia and have a trip like no other, because you're not going to find a story like this anywhere. If you like this video, you may like the full-blown Wired Nerdy podcast. If you want more of these retro reviews, please like, subscribe, and check out our main podcast, which is available on all major platforms. Thanks for watching.